Okay, so uh, last time we started this um, problem with the uh, rotating astronaut training arm. The astronauts made out of sausages today, it looks like. Ah. <laughs> Um, <laughs> that's the chair. He has zero arms. Okay. Uh, and we did, we're doing three approaches. To calculating... we calculate the net force or the force from the chair? Okay. Force on the, what did I call it, astronaut by chair? Mm -hmm. Oh, Pete, right, by the chair. Um, so the first one we did was um, coordinate system. So let me draw them here. Uh, this was y. Um, this was z, is that right? And then x was out towards us. And I'll call that origin a. And then there was another one here. Um, oh, uh, fixed at the astronaut center of mass. I'll call that origin B. And so the first one we did was the coordinate system uh, without rotation uh, with the origin at At A. Okay, so we already did this um, check. But let's think about all the ways that this uh, coordinate system is or is not inertial. Okay, so what are the two possible ways a coordinate system can be non inertial? Origin accelerating or rotating. So, um, Rotating axes. Okay, so this first way of doing it was the origin accelerating. No, were the axes rotating? So this is the one where the astronauts screaming by once every rotation. So no. No, and so this is an inertial coordinate system. And so all we had to do was calculate the observed acceleration. The observed acceleration is the true acceleration, and that's it. Then the second one um, was a coordinate system rotating with the arm. with the origin at A. Um, so is the origin accelerating and are the axes rotating? Um, okay, so what about the origin? Is the origin accelerating? Nope. Are the axes rotating? Yes. Um, so this is non-inertial, and we have to deal with the axes rotating, and we did that one. And we got the same force, which is good. That would be really bad news for our method if we didn't. And then the third one is a coordinate system 
rotating with the arm with the origin at the astronaut, at the chair. In this case, is the origin accelerating? Yeah, the, the origin of the coordinate system is spinning around the circle in circular motion. Um, are the axes rotating? They are in this case. Uh, so think of the origin accelerating is just saying, if the origin's doing anything but moving with a constant velocity, then the origin is accelerating. And in this case, it's in circular motion, so it's accelerating. The axes are also rotating because um, they're staying aligned with the arm as the thing moves around. So they're changing orientation. So we have to deal with both of these in this case. And so just as a reminder, um, to deal with um, an accelerating origin, what approach do we use? That's right, we use the relative motion equations. And to deal with rotating axes, we use the new stuff. The new stuff. And we're going to have to do both of these in this case. Um, okay, so first of all, uh, the acceleration of Pete relative to the ground is equal to the acceleration of Pete relative to the origin plus the acceleration of Pete, uh, sorry, acceleration of the origin relative to the ground. Um, well, let's get the easy one out of the way first. The acceleration of the origin relative to the ground uh, how are we going to calculate that? Yeah, that's right. So we're going to use um, alpha cross R plus omega cross quantity omega cross R. Um, this thing is moving at a constant angular velocity. So angular acceleration of the origin is zero. Angular velocity is zero, zero, pi. And the R vector goes from the center of the circular motion to the point of interest. So what's R? Zero, zero, it has a length of five. So yeah, zero R is equal to zero, zero, five. And um, so you get that the acceleration of the origin relative to the ground is equal to zero plus zero zero pi crossed with quantity zero zero pi cross zero zero five. Yes, that's good. Uh, it is in the y direction, right? It's rotating, the y-axis is the vertical axis, and it's rotating about the y-axis. Because it's a vector pointing from the center of our rotation to the point we care about, and that's the direction of the z-axis.
And so we get a value of 0, 0, negative 25 pi, uh, no, 5 pi squared. Okay, so now we set that aside, and now we have to deal with the rotating coordinate system. Um, now the acceleration of Pete relative to the origin, that we have to do um, according to uh, whoops, this equation. Um, the acceleration of Pete relative to the origin is equal to the components of the position double dot Uh, plus omega dot crossed with the position plus 2 times omega crossed with the position components dot plus capital omega cross quantity capital omega cross P. Okay, so can we come up with, in that coordinate system now, this coordinate system that's with an origin rated in the middle of his body, can we come up with a function for the observed position? What would that coordinate system see as his position as time goes by? Zero, that's right. So, uh, Px, Py, Pz is equal to zero at all times. Uh, so then, do we know what the observed velocity vector is? What I mean, we're, the observed velocity vector is just the time derivatives of each of these components. So if, if this is the function, what are the components dot? Yep. And then what are the components double dot? Um, what's the, let's see what else we need. Um, we also need to know the angular velocity of the coordinate system. What's the angular velocity of the coordinate system? Yep. So the coordinate system is rotating 0 pi 0. And what's capital Omega dot zero you're right it's all gonna zero out yep but I just want to plug all this in oh. yes that's right that's how quickly the that's Ignoring the motion of the origin, how fast the coordinate system is changing orientation. Okay, so the acceleration of Pete relative to the origin is equal to 0, 0, 0 plus um, omega dot crossed with P. plus 2 times omega crossed with the components dot plus 
plus omega, which is 0 pi 0 crossed with 0 pi 0 uh, crossed with the uh, crossed with the position vector, which is 0. All those go away. And you get that this is equal to zeros. Uh, so, the final answer is that the acceleration of peat relative to the ground is equal to 0, 0, negative 5 pi squared plus 0, 0, 0. So, you get that, and then, um, yep. Um, so for the The p vector is zero because the position vector is a vector going from the origin to the object that you care about. That's like the definition of the position vector. And in this case, the origin is at the point we care about. For position, there's no difference because you don't take any derivatives. The differences come up when you take time derivatives. Um, so the component's dot is a velocity that would be observed in your rotating coordinate system. And that's different than the position vector dot, which, ha which includes all those i dot, j dot, and k dot terms. So problems only arise when you take time derivatives of vectors. That's why the position vector is the same whether you're talking about the observed position or, um, or the true position. It's the same thing. Okay, and then uh, the force. Once we have the acceleration, you do the force the same way. Um, So you have the weight of 588.6 and the force vector on peat by the chair. And so Newton's second law says force on peat by the chair plus zero, negative 588.6, zero is equal to 60 times the acceleration and so yeah I've been doing that recently I've done that a few times that's weird um, it's I, it's like when you like when good golfers get like a little hitch in their stroke it, it's like I have that right now Uh, okay, FPC is equal to, not too surprisingly, 0, positive 588.6, negative 2960. Same thing as we got in the other ones. Okay, so um, what I'm going to have you do for the next problem set is do this same analysis but you're going to have to do it where the origin is on the arm halfway between the pivot point and the and the and p okay so in that case so if the okay so here's what it's going to be You're going to have a coordinate system that's, let me do it. 
the same directions. Y, Z, and then X coming out as this thing rotates in a circular motion like that. Um, so in this case, is the origin accelerating? Yeah, it's moving in circular motion. The only way an origin isn't accelerating is if it just has a constant velocity or zero velocity. Um, are the axes rotating? Yep, they're rotating with the arm. And so you're going to have to deal with both of these. And in this case, um, neither of those two terms is going to zero out the way it did. But you can follow exactly the same steps that, that I did in the last example. Okay. And why would you ever do it like this? Uh, well, I think I mentioned, what? That's why you would do it. Yeah, that's true. But um, the thing is, you just don't always have a choice of where your measurements are taken from. I, I think I mentioned that last time. You know, if you're, if you're doing measurements of things going on in a space station, you don't have the option of putting your coordinate system on, a, um, on the ground unless you have a super good camera. And, and in this case, you know, maybe there's something going on with the arm that, you know, the, the other two positions aren't practical. They'd be easier to use, but this is all we got, so we got to make the best of it, you know. Any questions about any of those calculations? How long did it take to I don't know when this was developed. That's a good question. Uh, I don't know. And they didn't have GoPros? <laughs> no, but... Uh, I don't know. That's a good question. Actually, I'd like to look into that too. I don't know when when this all started happening. Yeah, I don't know. Um, okay, so we're going to use this for two different. So we have this new tool a way to calculate accelerations and rotating coordinate systems. And we're going to use it for Use it for two things. Uh, the first one is to define um, a position, velocity, and acceleration vector using polar coordinates. And second, to do calculations um, where uh, one rigid body rides on top of another. So um, one rigid body motion rides on another rigid body motion. Um, what this does is um, then the rigid body that's riding on the other one isn't in a simple circular spherical motion. relative to the ground, uh, 
but it is relative to the other body. Um, okay, so we'll talk about that next time. Um, so let's do uh, polar coordinates. So I'm sure you've all seen polar coordinates before. Um, and the idea of polar coordinates is if you have this kind of implied inertial coordinate system, Um, you can track the motion of a particle as it does its thing by giving the distance r to the origin and the angle theta from, you know, some reference line that we'll, we'll call the implied x-axis. Okay, well, what are the polar coordinates? Um, The polar coordinates are r theta, but you can't do dynamics with those. Because they don't use uh, an orthogonal coordinate system. They aren't components in, a, let's say, a right-handed orthogonal coordinate system. So instead, we're going to define a right-handed orthogonal, you know, a right-handed perpendicular coordinate system based on these, um, based on these values. And it's going to look like this. Um, it has an axis that we'll call ER. that points from the implied origin to the, to the body that you're looking at. And then we'll call the perpendicular axis <coughs> E theta. That's a unit vector, so. It's perpendicular. Yep. So those are always perpendicular. And now what we have is, as that object moves around, um, that coordinate system moves around to track it. So it's a rotating coordinate system. So this coordinate system rotates. Um, with an angular velocity of 0, 0, theta dot, right? At any instant, whatever the rate of change of that angle is, that's the angular velocity. Okay, so now let's think about what these, well, really all we have to think about is what the position vector means in this coordinate system, and then we can use that to um, represent the velocity and acceleration vectors. Okay, so what's the position vector in this coordinate system? 
It's easier than that because that coordinate system, wherever this goes, that coordinate system keeps aiming at it. So it's just r in the er direction. So r er plus 0 e theta. And I'll write that as r0. Well, the velocity vector then is equal to the component's dot. plus the angular velocity of the coordinate system crossed with the position vector. So uh, what are the components dot? What? Uh, yes, that's right. So r dot 0, and then we'll write a third 0, like a z-axis. And then plus 0, 0, theta dot crossed with the position vector, r, 0, 0. And so what you get out of that is r dot, the surprising one, r theta, 0. And so you get r dot r theta, um, since that z-axis isn't really doing us any good. And then for the acceleration, that's equal to the second derivative of the position components. plus omega dot crossed with the position vector, plus 2 times omega crossed with the components dot, plus omega cross quantity omega cross p. So let's fill this in. Um, so what's the position double dot, the components double dot of the position? Yep, r double dot, 0, 0. What's omega dot? That's right, yep. Crossed with the position vector, which is r0, 0, 0, plus 2 times 0, 0, theta dot, that's omega, crossed with the components dot, we already did that one, uh, that's just equal to r dot 0, 0, and then plus 0, 0, theta dot, cross quantity. 0, 0, theta dot crossed with P, which is R, 0, 0. And if you go through all those calculations, you can simplify it to R double dot minus R theta dot squared. And then the second component is 2 R dot theta dot plus r theta double dot. And these, so if you're given an object's motion in polar coordinates, this is how you determine velocity and acceleration vectors that you can use in dynamics, use with Newton's laws and stuff. Um, so... Uh, no, I, uh, I want, I mean, I'll, probably more likely what I'll do is make you derive them. 
So I want you to know how to calculate that. Um, on the assignment for Monday, though, um, you can just use those formulas to, to calculate the stuff that I asked about. Okay. Any questions? <laughs>